The pancreas is an organ which is made up of two portions. It is made up of an endocrine portion and an exocrine portion. The endocrine portion is that part of the pancreas which secretes hormones, hormones such as insulin and glucagon, directly into the bloodstream. The exocrine portion of the pancreas is that which synthesizes stores and secretes digestive enzymes such as pancreatic amylase. And this makes up about 85% of the pancreas and is made up of asana tissue, of which the parts of that are known as asana cells. It is that exocrine portion of the pancreas that we're going to look at in more detail here. Knowing that these asana cells are involved in synthesizing, storing and secreting digestive enzymes, and given that we know that enzymes are proteins, it should not surprise us that when we look at an asana cell under an electron microscope, that we see many organelles associated with protein synthesis. So here we can see rough endoplasmic reticulum, and it's rough because the endoplasmic reticulum is associated with ATS ribosomes. And they're ATS because remember that this is a eukaryotic cell. And in this rough endoplasmic reticulum, you would get protein synthesis, production of those enzymes such as pancreatic amylase. Then we can also see the Golgi complex, otherwise known as Golgi apparatus. And here we would have modification of those proteins. And finally, this is the part that really gives away that this is a pancreatic asana cell. These are zymogen granules, and these are for the storage and secretion of digestive enzymes such as pancreatic amylase. Zymogen granules undergo exocytosis to release the digestive enzymes from the pancreas. The second kind of cells that the IB want you to take a look at are palisade mesophyll cells. But I think it's appropriate to put this in context and look first at the structure of a leaf. So when you take a cross section of a leaf, at the very top you can see that there is a cuticle, below which you find an upper epidermis. Underneath this is the most significant layer that we're looking at here really, is the mesophyll layer, which is comprised of the palisade mesophyll cells, the one that we're going to go closer into, and the spongy mesophyll cells. Beneath that you have an epidermis and a cuticle. And also notice these other kind of cells um, that we see, and these are guard cells either side of what we would call a stoma. So let's look in more detail at those palisade mesophyll cells in an electron micrograph. Most notable feature of this cell are the chloroplasts that I'm labeling here. And these are found all the way around the outside of the cell, and there is an abundance of them. And this makes sense because the chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis and the palisade mesophyll cells receive a lot of light because they're just beneath the cuticle and the upper epidermis. We can also see here the large vacuole which is taking up the majority of space in the middle of the cell and this is used for the storage of water. We can also identify some other organelles on this image. Labelled here is the nucleus, and this is where you would find the DNA. It's also the site of DNA replication and transcription. Also, within the cytoplasm, there are tiny little dots, and these tiny dots are the ATS ribosomes. Again, recall that palisade cells are eukaryotic cells, so they have ATS ribosomes, and these would be involved in protein synthesis. Now both photosynthesis and protein synthesis require energy in the form of ATP, and this will come from respiration. Right here I've labelled the mitochondria within this cell, and the mitochondria are the site of respiration. And finally, albeit very small, it is possible to observe the cellulose cell wall, which is the outermost layer of the cell, and the plasma membrane, which is found just inside of the cellulose cell wall. It's a tiny line. If you look really carefully, you'll find it. 